For USCFootball.com, I'm Jack Smith alongside Connor Morissette for instant analysis from USC's 43-41 win. Kind of a boring game, huh? Triple overtime. The Trojans win it here in the Coliseum. First overtime game since 2017, but they do beat the Arizona Wildcats. Certainly wasn't pretty. They were down 17-0 at one point, and even Lincoln Riley said in his post-game press conference, other teams that don't have the culture the Trojans have probably lose that one. The Trojans, even with the culture they had, still almost lost, but in the end, it's a two-point win and triple overtime. Definitely a big win for the culture, you're right. I think USC was like 2-35 and 35 or some crazy number in the last however many games they were down 17 to nothing or 17 to nothing or more or worse uh, in the past 20 years. So credit to the culture for fighting and winning. But man, that was an ugly game, Jack. I mean, they should have won at the end of regulation. 25-yard field goal from Dennis Lynch. I don't even know what to call that. I think it was technically blocked. Like he did a double clutch because the snap was high. That's when you'd want to have back and you want to make that and win. Uh, but yeah, credit to USC. Caleb Williams puts the team on his back in the overtime periods, especially that funky formation to, to end the game. And he runs in. It looked like he might have stepped out of bounds, but obviously he didn't. And, and USC wins. So credit to them for winning. But man, that was an ugly, uh, ugly win for sure. And, and the, the team's happy and they should be happy. They're 6-0. and They've handled this beginning part of the schedule really well. But I mean, I got a bad taste in my mouth after that one. I don't know about you. Uh, you definitely do. I feel like that, that kick goes down in USC lore if the Trojans lose this game. They might have lost their playoff hopes along with it because this next part of the schedule is so tough. You could barely afford one loss through that section, but if you lost to Arizona, especially here at home where the Trojans now still haven't lost under Lincoln Riley, it would have stung a little bit extra because the snap was high, the hold wasn't great, Lynch had to double clutch. It was ugly. The Trojans should have won at many different points in the game, but you could also argue the Trojans had no business winning the game. It was bad offensively. It was bad defensively for the majority of the game. In the end, though, Caleb Williams was inevitable, runs it in. He's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup for the two-point conversion. He gets in, then the Trojan defense gets a stop. But Williams, not his greatest day, still had three rushing touchdowns, all grown men runs, and he's able to get in for that last two-point conversion that sealed the win. Yeah, especially you mentioned the grown man runs, the one where he had the ball with both hands and reached for the pylon. Yeah, there a couple plays. I mean, not a couple. You don't win tonight if it's not for Caleb Williams. So you mentioned some other things there, too. I thought second game in a row, the offensive line didn't look particularly good. On defense, the sequence that really bothers me, if I'm the USC defensive coaching staff, when USC was up 28-20 to 20 and the fourth and goal and – Arizona not only scores, but it looked like they ran the same play on the two-point conversion, and then, and then they get that. USC's defense, while they did ultimately win them the game, they had some chances to get or wrap this thing up a little bit sooner. They weren't able to take advantage. I just feel like it's good you won the night, but against a better team, will the defense get that many chances to win? I don't know. I wanted to see the defense take a step forward tonight, and Caleb Williams, I'm not really sure you could take much more of a step forward. He's so good. He, he you know, I guess a little bit of an off night for him, but in the end, Seems like he always does the right thing. The defense, I was waiting for them in the end to do the right thing. It happened, but it happened way too late for my liking. Yeah, that sequence, it's 28-20. USC gave up a couple third down conversions. They get a stop on third down. Then they call a timeout. You get the play on fourth down. They had 10 men on the field, called the timeout. You get to put whoever you want out there. You get to put them on whatever assignment you want. You end up with one-on-one -on -one coverage between Bryson Shaw and Jacob Cowing, who went for four touchdowns against the Trojans. Then you run it back, two-point conversion. Got to have it for Arizona. Same exact play. It's a wide open touchdown. I just, I don't quite understand how after a timeout, you end up with that one-on-one -on -one coverage. People debate whether Bryson Shaw should be on the field. That's not a you know, comment that we're going to make. But one-on-one -on -one coverage with him and maybe one of the best receivers in the conference didn't seem like the right call that USC would want on fourth down. I agree. And just from the beginning, first play of the game, Tatrell McMillan, one of the best receivers in the conference, 30-yard gain. It was his own coverage. He found a soft spot. But he was wide open. And that's like the guy you got to stop. They have two guys that you got to stop, Cowing and T-Mac. And I don't think they did a good job. Cowing had four touchdowns tonight. I think that was an Arizona, tied an Arizona record. I'm nitpicking. I know they won. I don't want to, you know, be too negative here. But, like, on Tunnel Vision, Jack, we were talking, and I was like, I think USC, they're better than they've shown in the last couple weeks. I think they'll get a bounce-back win. I picked them to cover the spread. And they should have lost this game. <laughs> uh, if it wasn't for the penalties uh, on Arizona, some of those in the second half, I think they probably do lose the game. Credit to them for winning. But, man, oh, man, I, I just don't know how many more games you can win like this. They remind me of the Vikings last year. They won a lot of close games. Then in the playoffs, they lost to the Giants, who didn't end up being that good of a team. I feel like they're... You know, the, the, the rent is due for this team, and, and they got to pay soon. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting because we've 
harped on USC the last couple of weeks. Of course, two games that were closer than they should have been, but USC never trailed. They, they were the only FBS team entering today that had not trailed at any point in the season. Then they're down 17 nothing, and you're like, this is a different kind of looking bad, because even though USC almost blew a couple big leads against Arizona State and Colorado, you could at least point to the fact like, okay, we've never trailed. The defense has allowed late points, but this is a different kind of game. Down 17 nothing, And Lincoln Riley, he, he gave credit to the defense. Caleb Williams gave an impassioned kind of I guess unsolicited answer to a question that really wasn't brought up, but he wanted to share his thoughts on the defense. And Riley put it bluntly that USC's defense won them the game. It took Mason Cobb, a linebacker who told us he popped his rib out during the game, had been dealing with that injury the past couple weeks, played through a popped out rib and got the stop on the second or the, on the two point conversion in the third overtime. But it felt like a different game and maybe a morale booster for USC. But I thought coming in the last two weeks would be morale boosters because they wanted to prove the haters wrong here at home. It did not feel like that early, but they ended up getting the win to survive and go to six and zero. Hell of a play from Cobb, who never not that we ever did question his toughness, but you can't ever question that guy's toughness. And I agree, Jack. Last week, you're up 40 to 14 or 41 to 14. And then the way that game ended, I thought, OK, USC, they're going to come out with their hair on fire, be really pissed off, want to set the record straight. We're better than we showed last week. And then in the second quarter, Arizona had like 210 yards and USC had no yards. And the defense had given up 17 points on three drives. And it was like a continuation of last week instead of what I thought was going to happen where they'd bounce back a little bit. Credit to Cobb, hell of a play at the end. I thought the USC defense settled down and they made some nice plays in the middle of the game. But that beginning and that end, it's kind of like, oh, geez, I, I, I was expecting to see a little bit better. Cobb's toughness was awesome. I think Tackett Curtis, you can still watch his performance tonight and be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not totally sold on him going forward. The first six games, these were the games USC was supposed to win. And as it got closer and closer to the end of the six-game stretch, Arizona State, they won by a couple touchdowns. Colorado, you win by one touchdown. Arizona, you win by one field goal. I just don't think things are trending in the right direction. A win is a win. You feel good about a win, especially, you know, Pac-12 after dark games, yeah. after after dark games and triple overtime. Things go wrong there. It was a yeah. witching hour in college yeah. football this week. Six of the 22 undefeated teams coming into the week now have a loss. Notre Dame, USC's opponent next week, maybe looking ahead, oh, yeah. loses by multiple scores You'd to Louisville. You'd much rather USC than Notre Dame right You'd now. much rather be 6-0 and than 4-2. and That being said, it is hard to watch, but sometimes that's college football. I just think for USC fans, if they'd like a little bit less, well, that's college football than three weeks in a row. I was just writing too, like, who do you, that is college football, but like Caleb Williams is the obvious MVP. Who, who do you leave this game saying like, okay, wow, like I thought he really took a step forward. Cobb had some nice plays, Kalen Bullock had some nice plays too, but then you remember some other mistakes they made and no one's perfect. I just keep repeating myself here, so I'll, I'll wrap this up. I just expect it a little bit more, and I don't leave this game saying, wow, okay, here's someone I think you can count on that I learned you can count on against Arizona to beat some of these better teams like a Notre Dame, like an Oregon on the road, like a Washington. This player looked great. I expect him to be really good against these tougher opponents. And I thought you'd see a couple of those guys today. Taz Washington, Brendan Rice, I think, of course, they're mainstays. Arizona, they've dropped so many guys back, you'd think, USC would have been able to run the ball a little bit better, and they did have some success running. I thought Austin Jones maybe would have had a bigger game, or Marshawn Lloyd would have had a bigger game if Arizona's dropping all those guys, and the offensive line, I think, let you down a little bit. So they have a chance to get things right, and they'll improve in practice, but they're three touchdown favorites. They won by three. They haven't covered the spread the last three weeks. USC may be a good <laughs> USC may be a good team. They're certainly an undefeated team, but you know the question still yeah, are remains. Are they going to drop in the poll again? Do you think? Like they probably will drop in the poll, but to eight to not like with ranked teams losing, I think it'll be hard. We'll have to see how that plays out. But yeah, I think the question still remains: Can USC be a great team? Now we're only halfway through the regular season; still have time to figure out the answer to that question. But you're right; the offensive line can't keep playing as poorly as it has been, especially going into a physical game in South Bend against Notre Dame. The secondary has to be better. You can't make every quarterback you go against look like a Heisman contender. This this was Noah Fafita's second start of his career, yeah. a true sophomore, and he, he looked great. He, he dueled Caleb Williams, which Caleb Williams does some amazing things. The defense can't make the opponent's quarterback level with Caleb Williams every single week. It's happened basically three weeks in a row with Drew Pine, who less less so. But in the fourth quarter, he yeah, got a little worse. But yeah. earlier, yeah. No, I agree with you. Shadur Sanders, and now this week, uh, you've got Noah Fafita looking like a Heisman contender. So the defense needs to step up. But I think it is right. USC won the game with the defense in the second quarter. Definitely kept them in it, and they ended up getting that stop late. So it's a win. You like to be 6-0 if you're USC. There are questions. There are questions for Notre Dame as well. It'll be a, a very entertaining week this week because these two teams are, are very different. You know, one team has lost its close games in Notre Dame. They're not super threatening on offense, but 
Could a matchup with USC's defense spark that group? Who really knows? We'll have to see what the physicality of that one ends up like as well in South Bend. But an entertaining matchup, a back and forth one here today. It felt like USC had no business winning, but as they have a couple times under Lincoln Riley and with Caleb Williams, they find a way to get it done in the end. Not pretty. Sometimes it's college football, especially here Pac-12 after dark. A 43-41 to win in triple overtime. Certainly entertaining, but I'm sure it'll be an entertaining tunnel vision tomorrow night as well with the USC fans, and I'm sure they've got a lot of thoughts. <laughs> Do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up instant analysis? Uh, a couple. You know how a few times on a few drives, like USC made it look makes it look easy? I, I was a little surprised they had those struggles on offense. I felt like they really had to work for every single thing that they got. And credit to them for winning and, and working really hard and, and getting there. I thought that they'd be able to scheme some more things, and I, and I was just a little bit surprised that they had so much, had such a tough time on offense uh, in this game. Yeah, the, the line is concerning. I, I thought all these transfers, they're they're really good individually, but maybe they're having a tough time gelling some penalties. Um, so that was a surprise. But yeah, you're right. A win's a win. Six and zero. Oh. It didn't come easy tonight, but sometimes you got to win the hard ones. My last thought, Jack, just. The culture we talked about earlier, and Lincoln Riley mentioned how the culture on this team had to be really good to come back from 17-0. I was a little bit surprised how post-game no one said this performance wasn't acceptable and we need to be better. It was all, we got the job done, we did what we needed to do in the end. If you're a Georgia after, say, Arizona goes into Georgia and plays them really close, I just wonder what they would say after a game like this. A team that not only has national title aspirations, but has won, of course, the last couple of years. Is this standard that USC played to today good enough for a team like that? That's a question I have after tonight. A couple things I want to shout out. The Jacoby Covington interception, I feel like, changed the game. USC probably loses if or if yeah. Arizona scores on that drive or if, you know, they punt it and USC doesn't get the short field. It kind of boosted that offense a little bit. I also thought USC did a pretty good job, for the most part, handling a very physical game after the whistle yep. on plays, you know, past the sticks, out of bounds, that Arizona was trying to play. Certainly cheap shots on Caleb Williams. Some were called for roughing the passer. Some were, you know, tackles completely away from the play that Caleb wanted flags but got none. There was one retaliation um, from the offensive line for USC where it kind of looked like the play from the blind side where you're pushing them 20 yards down the field and you tackle them late. So USC had kind of one retaliation, but I thought they stayed pretty poised with guys like Justin Flo uh, and other guys on that defensive line that were harassing Caleb Williams, and he even mentioned it. You know, I'm taking hits after the whistle's been blown dead, when the ball is completely on the other side of the field, when I'm going out of bounds. So that's a game where you could see get really chippy because guys like to defend their quarterback, but Caleb Williams, I think that kind of the calm poise that he has, even in those moments, they didn't retaliate too much. And I think if they did, that's exactly what Arizona wanted. They wanted USC to play into that physicality, the chippiness, because that can set you behind the sticks. And if you're in overtime and you make a mistake like that, you might end up losing the game. So I thought USC handled that pretty well. That's another credit to Caleb Williams. He kept his cool. He never responded, never shoved. He, he was taking hits late. Credit to him. And yeah, you look at the stupid penalty counter, not just the penalty counter, the stupid penalty counter. Arizona had definitely more than double USC. The only really stupid one I can think of was the Jared Kingston one, which that was a little ticky-tack. US or Arizona definitely was called for a few ticky-tacks too, so I don't want to say like the refs were out to get anyone. It was, I don't think, a truly great officiated game, but you know, that's what you get. I agree though. That's a positive you can take away for sure. I thought USC was a smarter team tonight and that ended up being huge. How many penalties did Arizona have that gave USC first downs before overtime on like roughing the passers or unnecessary roughness, stuff like that. I think it was five in the second half. So yeah, you were definitely the smarter team tonight and that could be huge going forward. Uh, I, I, I think there will be other teams who will do stupid things in the future and if you don't retaliate, you'll be in a good spot. You know, maybe USC gets a little bit of the same thing against Notre Dame. Obviously a rivalry, lots of bad blood there. But USC wins its 11th straight game against Arizona, now five of the last six one-score games. This time the one score was a two-point conversion, but USC ends up on the high side. It's a 43-41 to win for the Trojans in triple overtime. Make sure you're checking out uscfootball.com inside Troy here on YouTube for all the interviews and the stories and all the thoughts that go out today. I'm sure Dan Weber will have a column. <laughs> There's a lot of thoughts out there for Trojan fans, Trojan writers, Trojan journalists, and we were happy to share a little bit of ours with you. For Connor Morissette, I'm Jack Smith. Check out uscfootball.com for more.